Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about 48. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button at the top. If you want to support the channel another way, there are affiliate links below for products and services that we talk about. And now we're going to talk about 48. Got no offer codes or affiliates for them. I don't even own a 48 device. I'm going to talk about some of the security culture as I see it from outside looking in based on a list of articles I have and security vulnerabilities. We're going to talk very specifically about the coding mistakes that 48 has been making and has been making for a number of years regarding hard coded keys. Now I was at an event about oh, a few months ago and I got to meet some of the 48 people, the salespeople, they seem pleasant. And there is always a problem in companies, a real decision that has to be made. We want to make things easy for the users. This is the sales and marketing team. We want to make it very easy and simple to use. And there's a security team going, don't hard code passwords. Then management sets the precedence and the culture of deciding who wins that battle. And that battle has been, uh, well, really, really not going well over at 48 in my opinion. So this is the latest as of, uh, just what, a few days ago, this was all made public. 40, 40 SIM hard-coded SSH key. Tested on version 525, 526. Uh, haven't confirmed all versions. Uh, 40 Net has their own CV on it, and they do. Uh, 40 SIM has a hard-coded SSH public key for user tunnel user, which is the same between all installs. An attacker with this key can successfully authenticate as the user for 40 SIM supervisor. Now, this is a restricted user. It is, and he points out, restricted to only opt shell uh, in this particular tunnel shell script. But I want you to think about something. Once a user has some level of access in the firewall, it's a matter of keep trying that access until you can pivot, see if there's a way to crash that particular program, see if there's a way there's something you can exploit. I don't want anything potentially authenticating on my firewalls. Firewalls are what divide us between our networks and the internet. So they are critical in terms of security. And there appears to be some uh, goof ups in terms of them actually getting the email from this particular security researcher. Uh, I'm a little fuzzy on why they didn't respond to the emails, but he did a disclosure based on them not responding as opposed to going through a, a waiting. He posted before they had the fix, but they have the fix. So here is the fix for 40 SIM default SSH key tunnel user. And you're probably thinking this is an isolated incident but I have tons of evidence of the contrary. So this is over at our second year. Hard-coded password raises new backdoor for eavesdropping fears. The discovery comes a month after competitor Juniper also had a hard-coded there. And yes, we now have a hard-coded password uh, in there. This would allow people to log in, so that's not good. So it's a challenge response for routine logging in with servers, et cetera. Uh, what, let's dive further. What about other products 48 makes? 40 Recorder sets credentials to, of 48 to static values. Another problem they have here, it's an authentication control bas a bypass because it's a hard-coded credential. It's not a default password, that's different. Uh, hard-coded credentials means they can just log in. But what about their other vulnerabilities? Surely these are just coding vulnerabilities and you're being you know, hyper bad about them time. You're really pushing it here. No, nope. These uh, also, this is just uh, I don't know how to describe it other than not secure. So in addition, it was disclosed and fixed on May of 2019 that 40OS included a magic string value that had been previously created at the request of a customer to enable and implement password change process when said password was expiring. That function had been inadvertently bundled into general 40OS release and improper authorization vulnerability resulted that that value being usable on its own, remotely changed passwords for SSL VPN users' credentials. Yeah, we just bundled in a password on accident. We don't apparently take our customer code base and our main code base and check them. Um, back to security culture. Use of hard-coded cryptographic key, cipher-sensitive data, and backup files. Hard-coded key again. See a common phrase here. Some 48 products shipped with another hard-coded encryption key. This was uh, one that took 18 months to fix. This was to close also in 2019. And took months to get this fixed. There's a whole breakdown of here. Um, they do have fixes for this. And of course, there's the security research. And I'll leave links to all these so you can do further reading if you want to dive into the details. But you notice the phrase I used in hard-coded key repetitively over four years. We're probably going to find more of these. Why? Well, you know, once someone has discovered that a company has a practice of putting hard-coded keys in there, people and security researchers are going to keep looking and probably keep finding more and more hard-coded keys. And this is a problem I have with a lot of closed source fire Walls, you don't know if there's a hard-coded key until security research take the time to poke away at it. Now, with open source, generally speaking, a mature open source product is not going to have hard-coded keys. Someone 
would notice them very, very quickly. So if a large open source project were to go, you know, we're just going to go and put these static encryption keys and uh, everyone can use them. And by the way, we'll go ahead and put the public and private one all bundled into the source code uh, so anyone can see it. That Someone would really look hard at that and go, that doesn't make any sense. Now, there are always code flaws that do come in because coding is hard and the larger your code base gets, the more difficult it is to secure. That's the statistics. And especially gets harder as you have programmers that are probably being pushed over by marketing or maybe they just hired the lowest bidder. I don't know details. I've never been inside 48 to understand this. I don't even know if they're going to address this in any way or ignore this video completely. But my feeling in watching a company that has an entire long history, and I only pulled up the one specifically, and I know there's still more, that were related to hard-coded passwords, this does not set well with me in terms of me and my thoughts on any company that does this. If you're hard-coding passwords, not setting defaults, not like, hey, here's a default and change it, like hard-coding cryptographic keys, that's bad. This may have been some security ideas people had many, many years ago out of convenience, but it's really arbitrary to generate new keys on new installs, on new boots, and then create different key pairs. And yes, I know that you do have to spend a little bit more time setting these things up when you have that versus the convenience of, hey, it just uses the same key. So anytime I load the software, it gets there. Awesome. That's great. But I don't believe 48 does that. Um, they appear to just choose the really, really easy route of create a key and bundle it in our firmware. Um, the last little note I'll have is I don't own any 48 devices, but I did try logging into 48's website. I did create an account with them. But I noticed you can't download firmware. And my understanding, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, the only way to get firmware is when you have a device that is under support. If I'm wrong about that, just let me know. Uh, I did notice, though, without a device, it didn't let me choose to download firmware. But lack of device means I kind of stopped there. I've had a few people mention it to me, and I've had people tell me two different answers. So if you want to leave that as a comment below, whether or not you need to have a support contract in order to get firmware, I'm interested in that. But as far as my overall thoughts on 48, every time someone asks, this video is is now the reply. Um, I don't know if the company is going to make some major changes, but I kind of think they should. This is definitely concerning. And once again, why I advocate for open source. And of course, not, not because it's open source, I think it's secure. Open source, mature product, gone through code vetting. That makes a product much more secure. Um, that helps a lot. And it, you know, we, we're not as likely to find default cryptographic keys in them. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you'd like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.